Welcome back everyone to another video by Game Dev Journey. You might recall that in the previous video we created an infinite scrolling background effect using a script on a texture rect. And today I'm going to show you how to do the exact same effect but this time using a shader. So we'll create a new scene over here. We'll again set it up just as before, a 2D scene. This time I'm going to call it background shader. And we'll give it a texture rect again, right there. Let's just go to 2D. We'll choose a different color this time. How about purple? And we can fill the screen with it as shown. What are shaders? Well, they're short programs that render graphics data. Literally, that is what they are. They are short little programs that are run by the graphics hardware or the graphics card. And because they are executed by the GPU, they are fast. Why? The GPU can process in parallel, so they can execute many instructions at the same time. Now, shaders have their own language in Godot and it's called Godot shader language. So you're not actually going to be coding in GDScript. You'll be coding in Godot shader language. So now that we have our scene set up, just as before, let's just remember to set this to tile, uh, we are ready to go. So what we need to do now is on the canvas item over here, we're going to create a new shader material. So you click here, click on new shader material, click on the shader itself and down here underneath shader, we're going to add a new shader. We can, um, let's in fact save our script, our scene first, so that uh, we can get the name here correctly. New shader, there it's saying background shader, GD shader. We click create. And over here in this bottom um, window with all the tabs, go to shader editor, and if we go down to our shader, this is the default shader code that we get given. Right, and we can actually get rid of most of it because we're only going to be using the vertex shader. So if we just delete the rest, this is all we need. So, well, what is a vertex shader? Well, they're generally used when you want to work with position, scale, and rotation. The fragment shader is for shading each individual pixel, and the light shader is for working with light. So we're going to change our code in the shader vertex uh, shader over here to the following. Let's just delete the comment. Okay, first of all, let's create a variable to control how fast the blocks, the tiles are going to move. Now in uh, shader language, if you want to expose a variable to the inspector, you use the keyword uniform. That will expose it to the editor. Then we can tell it what type of data it is. It'll be a float in this case, and we'll call it speed, and we'll give it a value of 0. Point five we can play with that number now in the vertex shader itself over here we are going to be changing the x and y position of the corners of each tile now these corners uh, or coordinates for the texture are referred to as uv's and they just cho chose the letters U and V so that we don't get them mixed up with X and Y in terms of X and Y is for position and U and V are coordinates of the text, the corners on the textures. If we want to get the corner of the, the tile, we'll say the UV dot X, right? And we're going to increase the UV X by our speed, and we're going to multiply that by time. So time is like similar to delta time. It is a continually changing value as time goes on. Then we need the UVY, 
and we'll also be increasing that by our speed multiplied by time. And that should do it. Oh yes, this is shader code. So we actually need semicolons to end each line like that. That should work. Oh, we're missing a semicolon there as well. And there you go. Our shader starts going immediately. So the exact same effect as before. Just save. We'll run it full screen. And we actually want to run this scene, so I'll run the scene. And there we go. Our shader does the exact same thing, except this time this code is running on the GPU and our previous code is running on the CPU. And you can do the exact same thing as before. We could substitute any of these uh, images. Let's go with green, for instance. And it's going to apply the shader to whichever texture we drop onto the rectangle. So there we have it, the same effect as before, but this time with a shader and using our shader code. There it is. Note that you can see the shader variable that we created over here underneath the shader material. Hope you enjoyed this. Next time we'll move on to uh, creating our level with the tile map. See you next time.